This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, welcome to Lex. Uh, this conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, welcome to Splunk Core Certified Users or Splunk for Performance Testers from Isha Training Solutions. This is Vibhu. I'm having around like 12, 12 years of experience in performance testing and engineering. And I have been working on Splunk since five years. And that's about me. Uh, yeah, let's start. So what is Splunk? So Splunk is a software which is used to collect search and analyze the logs okay so like many people has uh, some uh, uh, under they want to know the difference between the app dynamics as well as the splunk the app dynamics monitors the performance uh, i mean like performance counters like whether it can be like os or or it can be a a like a application performance metrics right but whereas splunk is designed for a specific purpose so Splunk is designed to collect the logs from different machines like it can be from app servers or it can be from um, uh, web servers or it can be from database. Okay, it is a it is a centralized repository that collects the logs and it will provide a UI to access those logs. Okay, so mm, for example, yeah, this is my Plunk UI basically. So if I log into this one, right? <coughs> this is my UI, Splunk UI. So mm. Okay. Underscore internal. So what it will give you, right? It will give you the logs that are that it has been collected from various source machines. Let us assume, like now, what what's happening, right? Everyone are moving into who some cloud infrastructure and they are spinning the micro, uh, they are spinning the functionality in the microservices rather than deploying everything in one single container in a standalone environment. So what happens if you have this kind of architecture? each microservice will be like writing logs for each functionality one log will be generated and the input from one microservice will be fed into the other microservice right so during that time right uh, it, it it will be a, a like a hectic job or it's a it's a challenge uh, for a tester or a developer to analyze the logs so if you have some some console which from which we can monitor if you have a downstream system 100 systems or 200 systems if you if it can collect you and get you the data you can directly verify from the ui so splunk does that part <coughs> so what it does right splunk collects and stores the data in the indexer from which it can generate the graphs, reports, alerts, and dashboards and visualizations. So, visualization in the sense like now the Splunk has collected the data over here. Now I will go to my I have created some sample uh, dashboards. So using the data raw data which I had, I was able to interpret something like this. I was able to build the dashboards like this. Okay, Splunk is basically used for this job. <coughs> okay, what it captures basically? From it captures data from files. Like let us assume, like if you are having some um operating system, like that it can be Windows or Linux. <coughs> and your applications will also write the data into the files so those sorts of logs can be shipped those files can be shipped to the splunk 
and if there is some um, like a network related information something like tcp udp information as well as the like stats from the routers okay those can also be collected and there is something called a scripted input scripted input is something like if i'm i'm a, as an api <coughs> i'm developing something and I, I can push the data into the splunk directly i can write a program such that i can directly inject the data into the splunk okay these are the mostly like these are the three areas where it can capture the data <coughs> and store the data okay and one beauty of the splunk is like it can get the information or the logs or the uh, inputs from any device and at any amount means uh, it won't bother about like if it is like one terabyte or two terabyte or like 100 gb per day or 200 gb per day so based on the license provided splunk will be providing the license for you we have to buy the license based on that right you can use it like if you purchase for 100 gb you can ship 100 gb of data if you purchase some 200 gb you can purchase you can ship 200 gb of data per day okay and from any location it can ship the data so to put it in a pictorial view this is the thing so it can ship the data from servers it can ship the data from this uh, servers and active directory windows there will be some radio frequency devices and sensors vmware app servers security devices databases web servers networks exchange servers mainframes systems so uh, splunk can monitor anything so it will get the data it will collect the data from the source system let us assume like this is my destination this is my source it will get collect the data from my source systems and put it in the indexer or put it in the splunk and it will provide a ui as i mentioned i have showed that ui splunk ui right using that ui you can fetch the data and we can interpret the data one question you should get like why logs are useful logs will be used like let us assume if you are having some error or issues right first the place of investigation would be the log if you face any issue or if there is any throughput drop or something or response time increase right first you have to identify which component is taking time right so for that right you have to go to that exact functionality if there are any spikes or something for a period of time we have to go narrow down like which component is going down there will you you may have some question like there will be apm tool installed but if uh, but one problem is like let us assume like your enterprise is having some your end to end uh, solution is having somewhere around like uh, six downstream systems okay which are developed by different different teams okay during that time the problem is right each downstream system may use different apm tool then it will be a challenge for us to track the end to end solution right so during that time right splunk will be useful and splunk will be used by the support teams basically so support teams will create the dashboards and and whenever they get any issue they will directly straight away go and check the dashboard okay if there is an any alert like there are many errors if there is any throughput drop if there is an increase in the response time right directly they will have they will track everything via dashboards okay something like this and if there are any failures right per minute or like power hourly basis right they will prepare something like this and if there are any errors if they see something like red or something right directly they will report it or they will send it for the development team and how many requests that are processed for last one hour or something can also be checked over here and uh, like there may be like different of business functionality like this is actually the splunk source type but if you have if you can map it to some your business functionality you can get the count of the request as well as the percentage of the pass and fail okay like this support team will prepare the dashboards and they will be using in the prod systems and um, 
this how the log would be actually we will first see like how the log will be log will be something like this right you will be having some timestamp after that you will be having the log level and after that the transaction id and we will be having some what is the uh, like uh, it may be like post call or a get call or a delete call and a uh, and we'll have something like the so resource okay let us assume like uh, this is a, just a sample snippet of a e-commerce application okay here you will have the timestamp see here uh, by seeing this use uh, snippet right i came to know like uh, someone is purchasing the mobile that is called as the iphone and its pri price is around like uh, 500 dollars and the result is success okay and the response time is around like 100 milliseconds so by <clears throat> by seeing this right Yeah, the customer will capture the data related to business. Just now I have showed you a snippet, no? Just now I have showed you a snippet, which contains something like a, a, a e-commerce application transaction log. E-commerce application transaction log, something like that it is there, right? So like uh, during a, a a big billion day or like a thanksgiving day right the amazon or or those people will just to present you with the summary of the or summary of the uh, turnover uh, to be more specific like how many how many what is the turnover and how many mobiles they have sold right those things they will put in in their site right so that data can be collected using this plug so they will check the logs and they will submit this price over that period of like two hours or three hours so that uh, when we submit this right you will get the over or overall all the purchases that happened during that time window and this plunk can be used for uh, compilance and auditing there are some um um, um governance bodies like, uh, like uh, pci socks and hipaa and they will review the log and there will be some uh, like log retention requirements something like uh, if it is a financial institution where the credit cards transactions logs right so like uh, it, it is expected like uh, they should store the data for next to 10 years because if any uh, transaction if there any fraud happens or something right they will keep the log to backtrack or something right they will keep the transactional logs of last 10 years if they want to backtrack right they can directly go and search uh, like last four years logs okay so we'll now discuss on the what is the course so this is the course syllabus which we will be discussing we will be explaining about the what is plunk and uh, what are the products and the latest uh, so like latest versions of the splunk and we will be discussing like there are like splunk is not a single software it has multiple components so we'll be discussing about those multiple components and uh, the deployment models also we will be discussing we'll be discussing about the standalone deployment distributed as a, as a cluster deployment and uh, uh, actually splunk provides like two types of uh, we can uh, actually the splunk provides a SaaS application which is valid for 15 years sorry 15 days sorry it is valid for 15 days if you create any account uh, you can spin a SaaS image SaaS instance from splunk which is free you can do that one or you can inter uh, install the enterprise edition the difference would be like the logs if you provision a, a SaaS instance right the application will be created in the cloud by the and it is maintained by the 
Splunk itself, like if there is any sense to information, like if uh, banking or something, right? Uh, not sure on the trust. Okay, they will be providing the security, but most of the corporates, right? They will be installing their uh, enterprise uh, editions locally in their company itself. They will buy the enterprise Linux and they will be provisioning their infrastructure uh, that is needed for the Splunk. We'll be like uh, discussing. We'll be having sessions on on installing the Splunk on Windows, Linux and uh, we'll be having some uh, like uh, oh, there will be some component called as like universal forwarder so we'll be discussing and we'll be configuring the universal forwarder and we'll be seeing the live demo like whenever we the log ships right the same uh, the same fashion the logs will be sent to the indexer the demo you will be having and we'll be having some sessions on the uh, uh, users and uh, we'll be discussing on the Splunk UI. We'll, give, we'll have a walkthrough on the Splunk and we'll be discussing about the Splunk index and uh, how to inject the data when it comes to Splunk's uh, SPL, right? So we'll be discussing about these uh, operators as well as the wildcards and we'll be discussing on this knowledge objects and how to extract the fields and we'll be discussing on this commands like top rare stats distincts and average and some time chart okay and uh, we'll be uh, discussing on the tags as well as the uh, like macros and we'll be also discussing on 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 like alerts how to configure the alerts and how to configure the uh, like a dashboard reports this will be discussed actually these reports and uh, dashboards sorry reports as well as alerts will be coming to the mail so those things will be discovered uh, sorry discussed and we'll be discussing about the different types of charts like line chart at a single valued chart as well as the column and area and scattered chart right so we'll have something like this here Okay, I will show this one. So these are the dashboard charts. So this is a single valued chart. So I'll be discussing uh, on like how to create these fields, how to create these charts, as well as we'll be creating some drop downs and text text boxes. And uh, We'll be creating the submit buttons and we'll be discussing on the drill downs and there is one more thing called like like uh, uh, drill down drill down is something like okay this is one chart actually basically okay i have seen like there are some errors 999 166 errors and now i have to report it right i have to open my zira so if i click uh, now i have to open my zira manually but i can link that url to this dashboard such that if i click right click or if i click on this one right automatically my zira will be opened if it is having ss4 right in your office directly the authentication will happen directly okay and you can if you are having some like a uh, child reports or child dashboards and main dashboard right we can link this uh, dashboards there if there is any child dashboard exist for this thing, right? We can link it over here. And we'll be discussing on the uh, apps. Actually, there is this one uh, important thing like Splunk apps and what is the Splunk add on. So we'll be installing one or two Splunk apps and uh, uh, we'll have some demo. And uh, there are two types of installation like online and offline installation of Splunk. So those things also will be taken care. And Splunk, we'll be discussing some advanced concepts like Splunk data models, pivot, pivot tables and lookups. Okay. And uh, we'll be having some um, um, like if, if you are if you are into administration, no? Then if there is any issue like if you have configured some Splunk forwarder and from source systems if you are sending some data to Splunk if there is any issue if the data is not coming right you will be having a B tool which is like a troubleshooting utility which is used to 
find the issue so i i will be explaining you on the usage of this b tool as well so if you have any questions i will take